This is Hannibal here from thehannibaltv.com, and I'm also a reporter for World Class Pro Wrestling. Sorry for the delay. Uh, my normal co-host, Jerry the Boss Bostick, was uh, supposed to join us, but he's a little upset over something tonight. But I do have none other than the Texas wrestling legend helped start Steve Austin in the wrestling business helped uh, in many incarnations of of uh, booking over the years all over the place not just in Texas none other than the flamboyant Eric Embry former Texas champion and he's held a lot of other titles over the years uh, thank you Hannibal I appreciate that buddy and uh, man I, I am so excited today's Thursday. And the big kickoff show in Irving is two days away. We have worked so hard for this. And, uh, man, I, I just can't be more excited. See, I got my world-class shirt on. I might even sleep in it tonight. Yeah, because uh, we're both heading out tomorrow to Dallas. It's snowing here in negative seven today. So I'm looking forward to getting the hell out of here. I don't blame you. It was nice here today, a little breezy. Uh, it was in the 40s, and, and I'm in Kentucky. And uh, really looking uh, – I'm just so excited. I'm kind of lost for words, if you can believe me ever being lost for words. And, uh, you know, with, with Jerry not here, uh, you know, I don't really want to go into it uh, a whole lot. I, I just – I'm sure he doesn't want me to talk about it. But Charlie Haas, you egg-sucking dog, boy. It, it, what you did to Jerry uh, was j completely uncalled for, was uh, way past personal. Uh, you know, Jerry has, uh, in the last few months I've been working with him, uh, he has poured his heart and soul into this project. He has everything on the line. I mean, everything he has is on the line uh, for the success of this show. And it kind of kind, reminds me of Vince McMahon. When Vince McMahon did WrestleMania 1, if it hadn't have made it, there would be no WWE today. But Vince had the confidence, just like Jerry Bosnick has the confidence in world class, <clears throat> and we're coming back. <coughs> yeah, me. and one thing, you said you were at a loss for words earlier. As a promoter, I can't believe Jerry is doing this. There's this crazy deal for this show on uh, Saturday night in Irving, Texas at Southern Junction. General admission tickets are as low as $10. And when you buy a general admission ticket, you could bring up to two kids free and mick foley is going to be part of this carlito <laughs> you kevin sullivan charlie Haas, jacob fatu moonshine mantel jenny santana fuego del sol the blood hunter blaze it's going to be you can't get a better deal than free kids tickets in 2021 for something like this no you sure can't and uh uh, you know, it, since you brought up tickets, uh, there, there are a few floor seats left. So if, if you want to get close to the ring and so forth, uh, I'm sure there will be a place on here that you can go to uh, to buy the tickets online uh, on the Internet. I'm not too Internet savvy and so forth. Yeah. Um, but, yes, uh, each uh, paying adult can bring two kids with them uh, in the general admission section. Uh this, this is actually something I started 35 years ago, maybe, with uh, Chris Adams. When uh, Chris promoted some shows in world class there in Texas and Oklahoma and uh, sitting in the dressing room in one of those little, little towns one night, we were talking, and uh, that's where this ideal was born. And uh, it wasn't uh, two or three years later, uh, uh, circuses and all kinds of different stuff was doing uh, the free kids tickets with a paying adult. So uh, I, I think it's a, well, it's a super deal. And and that card for the 11th, man, that card is stacked plum full. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, one of the matches that really stands out to me is uh, Moonshine Mantel and uh, Jacob Fatu. Uh, 
that match could main event Madison Square Garden beyond any shadow of a doubt in my mind. Uh, I have seen both of these guys uh, wrestle, and uh, uh, just just like back in the day, they beat the crap out of each other, and uh, they don't hold back. They go. They're they're not scared, and uh, that'll be one match that I have going to have to sit out there and watch myself. One that I'm looking forward to, and I was actually just talking about this match like just before we went on the air with somebody else, is Jenny Santana, former, well, she is the current grappling champion, national and world, taking on Queen Erica, former NWA women's world mm-hmm. champion. And it's Jenny Santana's very first match, Tito Santana's daughter. So this is actually going to be a historic match, but she's getting thrown to the wolves right here. You're the matchmaker, so I guess it's your fault against the former <laughs> NWA champion. I, I, you know, I, I don't really know Jenna. I know her daddy and uh, worked with him years ago. But uh, I, 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 I let her in on a little secret of what Erica told me. Uh, uh, Erica says she's, you know, Jenna is uh, trying to make a name for herself. And Erica assured me that that broad is not going to make a name for herself at her expense. So, Jenna, uh, you better lace your boots up tight, girl. As uh, I'm going to have to watch this one, too. I might have to watch a lot of these because a lot of them have my interest. Yeah, I think that WWE scouts are definitely going to be watching how Jenny does in that with uh, the history that her father has with that company and probably a lot of her father's friends are going to be interested in that match as well. I would suspect. Oh yes, for sure. For sure. And, uh, the reports I've been getting on Jenna is, uh, that, that she's doing super, that she's worked her butt off the last few months and, uh, that she really wants this. And, uh, but boy, she, she's got a tough opponent in Erica. I'll tell her that. And you know, it could be just in the name, Erica. (laughs) there's another girls match i'm not too familiar with these two i've seen danny b once and i saw a promo that kelsey reagan did recently beautiful young lady but uh this one i'm sure the fans are going to be interested in the with the popularity of women's wrestling these days yes yes and uh you know they're they're both gunning for the world-class woman's uh title and uh uh, that that will be an interesting match. I'm not uh, real familiar with either one, but uh, uh, with uh, that world title, the woman's uh, title uh, in the background, uh, that's that's what they're all gunning for, you know, just like the guys. You know, we gun for the world heavyweight title, and uh, the girls are gunning for theirs. What's the situation with the the world title? I guess Stefan Bonner has it now, the world-class title but he's been injured and I've heard that maybe uh, this Charlie Haas and Moonshine Mantel, whoever wins that might be in contention for a title shot or if, if Stefan can't return to the ring because his injuries are too bad, any idea what's going to happen? Yeah, I, I, I think what's going to happen uh, is, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, uh, you know, there's a lot of legalities that we have to go through. But uh, uh, probably uh, will come down to four or five of world class's top contenders uh, will either go into a tournament to declare a new champion if uh, Stephen can't to defend uh, within a reasonable amount of time. And in my mind, that reasonable amount of time has passed. And uh, so we'll either uh, we're either going to have a tournament uh Maybe uh, uh, a fatal four-way, fatal five-way, fatal six-way. Uh, but we will be uh, crowning a uh, world heavyweight champion uh, in the very near future. And you definitely have a Texas heavyweight champion with the Blood Hunter, who is going to be managed by Kevin Sullivan and Blaze <laughs> against Carlito, who has held <laughs> numerous titles in WWE and Puerto Rico, of course. He's the son of WWE Hall of Famer Carlos Colon, and he's looking in the top shape of his career. 
Uh, what are you expecting in this match? Well, I'm expecting them to tear the Southern Junction apart. <laughs> the, uh, you know, Carlito, I, I knew him when he was a little boy. <clears throat> uh, I haven't known him since he's uh, turned into the man that he has. But uh, if he's anything like his father, and I'm sure Carlos raised him to be, Carlos was one of the toughest uh, opponents that I had ever worked with. I spent a lot, a lot of time in Puerto Rico and uh, Carlos Colon could go. And uh, if anybody don't believe that, ask uh, Stan Hansen, Abdullah the Butcher, uh, anybody that was anybody, Carlos has uh, wins over. And uh, <clears throat> he was the, uh, the, uh, what, what is WCW? What I can't think of uh, Puerto Rico's uh, name back then. World Wrestling Council. Yes, yes. The world, w, yeah, WWC. And uh, uh, Carlos, uh, gosh, we went all over those islands, and uh, what a territory, uh, man! He 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 had it going on. And uh, Blood Hunter, what what I get from him? I saw him uh, for the first time in uh, Wichita a uh, couple two or three months ago when we were there and uh what an impressive uh, looking son of a gun he was it made me wish i was 30 years younger and uh the blood hunter was in my time uh back in world class because man i would have loved to have faced him uh i always uh, had a a natch of uh biting off more than i could chew but uh, I always ended up chewing it and spitting it out, and I would have loved to work with him. Uh, he, he's another one of those uh, fought to moonshine, uh, beats his opponents half to dang death. And uh, uh, Carlito, I, I'm sure uh, he can take it. And uh, uh, I don't think we're going to see a wrestling match. I think we're going to see a damn fight there. You're probably right. I, w I would have to agree with you. Ivan Santos, who I believe is from Puerto Rico, says you were a heat magnet in Puerto Rico. Do you have any stories oh. about the heat getting uh, off the rails a bit in Puerto Rico? We we saw Seth Rollins get taken down by a fan not too long ago in WWE. I'm sure you had some scarier moments than that in Puerto Rico, but apparently he was terrified. Brother. We, we had, uh, <clears throat> the office had a security team and, uh, so three or four of those guys were bigger than Abdullah, the size of Stan Hansen. They wore army fatigues, army boots and carried, uh, big batons. And, uh, one of the, one, one, one of the, uh, stays in Puerto Rico, the sheep herders, Luke and Butch were there and you're talking about heat magnets there. Uh, I would say without exaggerating, we had to fight our way through the people back to the dressing room three and four times a week. Uh, unreal, the heat in Puerto Rico and uh, dangerous heat. I've had uh, rental cars turned over. I've had bricks through windshields. Uh, I've been split so many times and uh on the head and arms with uh, whiskey bottles beer bottles uh i can remember ponce puerto rico was a dangerous place they, it was a big arena and you would uh, get to the dressing room you would go under uh between the bleachers and they had people on top where you walked to setting and standing and uh in ponce it got to be a thing they would throw spark plugs a spark plug out of a car and you can imagine if you got hit in the eye with one of them and they would throw when you went into the, or the dressing room the son of a guns would try to throw live rats the four-legged rats with the long tails and uh, I, i've seen some of the guys uh, get the rat caught in their hair get the rat on them i, I never saw anybody get bit by one thank god but uh there were some vicious fans in Puerto Rico, and uh, I got smart in Puerto Rico because you couldn't go anywhere. Uh, you know, the beaches are beautiful, and uh, uh, all, all the little stores and stuff, but you couldn't go anywhere, <clears throat> and so I got smart. I started buying this punk hairspray 
that the girls color their hairs with hair with. And I would spray paint my hair black, wear a cap, and nobody recognized me. I'd go all over the island and nobody knew who I was, thank goodness. <laughs> wow. You were also in the Florida territory. How is Florida compared to Puerto Rico? Both of them had some pretty violent matches at times. Yeah, yeah, but no no comparison to Puerto Rico. I would compare Puerto Rico to Mexico. Mexico was a dangerous place. And, uh, you know, there's a thing on the Internet now about I can't think of the guy's name is on a wrestling site uh, to where uh, the cops were holding him up for money in Mexico and he was afraid not to pay him and blah, blah, blah. When, when I first got to Mexico, the office had a meeting with me. And then as I started getting over, they had another meeting with me. And uh, my deal with the wrestling office was. Any policeman that uh, wants you to pay your fine to them, pay it and let us know how much and we'll pay you back. So <clears throat> this guy uh, is not lying. He's not making up a story. If Mexico's any, any, any way it was back when I was there, because I paid off so many cops, it was unreal. Uh, yeah, Florida. Doesn't sound like a, a place that you'd want to go outside of a resort. Oh, no, no. I, I've stepped over dead people on the sidewalks that would be laying there two or three days. Uh, but if you stay in the tourist, the tourist zones, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I made a lot of money in Mexico. I had a super run in Mexico with uh, Dos Carlos, Fishman, Payroll Wayo, Mil Mascaras. Uh, well, the, the list goes on. Uh, and Rick Avera, Connect. Uh, I, I, I had, I probably spent in my career probably a total of uh, three years in Mexico. Uh, Florida, God, I love Florida. Florida was my first real, I call it real territory uh, to push me. And uh, I was the little boy. Uh, the, the nice, polite kid from Kentucky, uh, yes, Mr. Soley, no, Mr. Soley, no, sir, Mr. Soley, and J.J. Uh, uh, J. Dillon uh, was running things, and uh, uh, he, he, he kick-started my career, I guess I would say, and I've always been grateful to J.J. <laughs> Did you know Kevin Sullivan from back in those days? Uh, I'll, we would cross paths off and on. Uh, never, we never spent a lot of time with each other, or I mean, in the same place at the same time, uh, other than uh, San Antonio for Joe Blanchard. Uh, we would fly Kevin in from Florida uh, for big shows and angles and stuff, and uh, he made quite a few trips to the San Antonio office. And uh, I'll tell you one real quick fun, funny story. Uh, uh, Kevin was complaining about having uh, what a hassle it was to fly with his snakes. And, you know, had them great big old fat, long son of a guns. And uh, we were in the office one day and uh, I made a comment as a joke, being a smart ass. I said, well, why don't we just look in the phone book under rent a snake? And the secretary thought I was serious. Rennie, God bless her. I don't know whatever happened to her. But uh, Rennie got the yellow pages out, and there was a rent -a snake in San Antonio. So we started renting, renting Kevin snakes for him then. <laughs> that sounds a lot easier than dragging them uh, from town to town. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was... Uh... But it uh, I, that, I, back to this uh, show Saturday night, people. Oh my gosh, world class yeah. is coming back. Uh, Charlie, I was going to ask you something because you brought yeah. up Charlie earlier. Is this match still happening? Because I understand Charlie has like an open challenge now, and mm -hmm. I heard a rumor that, that Gino <laughs> got hurt or something. Well, no, the, well, Gino I, maybe got hurt. Maybe somebody got him to back out of the match. I don't know. But uh, uh, Jerry, after what Charlie did, Jerry Bosnick has put himself in this match against Charlie Haas for the SWE heavyweight title. So 
my my fear of uh, uh, this turning into a SWE versus world class situation uh, is happening. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of fans have been questioning it online. Uh, why are these SWE people coming to world class? Well, Charlie, you know the damn reason now, don't you? <laughs> or no, I should rephrase that. Charlie, you know that we know what's going on now. And uh, Jerry uh, is, he's our right man. Like I say, everything the man has is on the line here. And uh, world class is going to survive. And uh, maybe we'll have another Medusa or uh, whoever it was that uh, uh, threw the belt in the garbage can that people talked about for 50 years later. Uh, maybe yeah, when, uh, yeah, maybe when Jerry Boston takes that SWE belt Saturday night and throws it in the garbage can, they'll be talking about him 20 years from now. Yeah, a lot of fans have been wondering that. I mean, there's been SWE content now on my channel. There's been world-class content on SWE channel. There's There seems to be some type of SWE crossover happening, and it do doesn't look to be a good thing necessarily. No, it, it's uh, – uh, I think uh, some people were afraid of world-class coming back because uh, world class has the big gun on their side. And, uh, you know, I went through this before with Akbar, Tojo, P.Y. Chu High. And, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that feud there probably cut my career a little short uh, because it took such a toll. But uh, Jerry Bostink knows that I've got his back. And uh, uh, whatever needs to happen is going to happen. And uh, world class is coming back and coming back with a vengeance. You know, the, the fans of Texas, you know, if I ever had to pick a home, uh, had to leave my home and pick a home, uh, the Dallas area would be what I picked. I lived there for a few years. And uh, uh, if I hadn't had kids and a wife somewhere else, uh, I would have never left. And uh, if I didn't have kids and grandkids now, I'd be living there right now. So world class is coming back. And uh, the people of Texas, they want it back. And uh, we're going to give it to you. We're going to give it to you. Definitely. Dallas is uh, one of my favorite cities, too. And, of course, your buddy, I understand oh. you're responsible for this, Cactus Jack. AKA mankind, AKA Mitch Foley look. is coming. Uh, how did I, you pull this so, off? I am so excited. I love Cactus. Oh my God. Uh, Cactus and me, man, uh, what matches we had. We beat the shit, pardon the language. I mean, if, if you hit Cactus and didn't leave a mark, he'd bust you right in the mouth and say, now, damn it, hit me. And, uh, what matches I had with him, what chemistry and what a nice guy he was. He was just such a nice guy. And I am so, so excited about going to hook up with him again. Uh, I just can't explain, uh, how excited I am. Uh, I get a lot of credit for, uh, Maybe uh, some people say kickstarting Cactus's career, uh, putting him on the map. Hell, I didn't do anything for that man that he didn't do for me. And uh, Cactus was so good that uh, he would have made it if he had never met Eric Embry. And, uh, but if they want to give me a little credit, uh, boy, I'll take it because uh, what, a, what a big dog he turned out to be, huh? Definitely. He's uh, one of the most popular wrestlers the WWE ever had, and he's in the Hall of Fame now there. Is there any uh, match of his that stands out to you that you wrestled him on that uh, was one that he took a particularly brutal beating in? Uh, every one of them, because uh, we believed we believed in what we were doing. And uh, just, I mean, every match with Cactus and, and Gary Young, I cannot leave out Gary Young, uh, was special. I, Iceman King Parsons, you know, 
uh, you know, I, I came to Dallas uh, as a favor to Bruiser Brody. Uh, I had restaurants in Florida and uh, and went back to Puerto Rico to uh, make the weekend of big shows as a returning a favor to Carlos. And uh, Brody locked me in a little room with him and Abdullah and got out on his knees and said, will you please come to Dallas and help me? And I was like, Frank, no, I, I'm through. I'm just doing this for Carlos. And he said, every time you called me and asked me to come over here or any other territory, I always did it. Now I'm asking you, please come to Dallas. So that, you know, guilt trip. And uh, I told him I would come uh, for short term. And uh, I come into da to get Dallas as a heel with a damn powder box where I would powder my opponent uh, and projecting, is he or isn't he? And I went from th that is he or isn't he to the hottest baby face the territory had had for years. We turned the territory around from losing money and inevitably going out of business and we saved it. And turned it back into one hell of a company again. You definitely did. Uh, was that like one of your toughest booking jobs or was there ever a tougher one than that, taking a territory from nothing to a major force? That, that was a good one. That, that was, that was uh, a good one, but you know, the, the stars were aligned. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into talking about uh, the boys, uh, meaning the boys, uh, because, uh, there's only one of them left and, uh, uh, Carrie and me were, we, we were pretty good buddies, but, uh, de dealing with them, uh, Fritz took a liking to me. And once you got past Fritz's, uh, rough, rough, uh, front, once you got past the rah, 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 he was pretty damn cool. And he knew the wrestling business, like the back of his hand. And uh, <clears throat> so, I, I mean, I, I love Dallas. Uh, uh, it, it, it maybe Memphis, booking Memphis was my hardest uh, uh, booking tour, so to speak. Uh, I never popped Memphis. Uh, there were too many clicks, too many uh, people been there forever. And uh, too many people set in their ways that could get by with what they wanted to. And uh, but I take the blame. I wasn't smart enough at the time uh, to do what I needed to do to pop that territory and uh, uh, turn it back into making money. And uh, I, I didn't I stayed there a few months. Uh, I had Tom Pritchard as a partner, uh, Miss Texas, uh, Jackie. Jackie Moore, uh, who had uh, started out with Akbar in his school and so forth. And uh, uh, she was a, a tremendous asset, tremendous asset. And uh, I actually reached out to her with uh, World Class coming back to life. And uh, uh, I didn't, I, I, what I can say is I, I, did, I did not get a yes, uh, but I didn't get a hard no. So, uh, Dallas, we might see, uh, Miss Texas, uh, come back sometime down the road. Kevin was actually comparing her to blaze the, uh, blood hunters valet the other day, because they're, they're both, uh, very jacked oh. individuals. So maybe, uh, those two, uh, in some type of a confrontation would be interesting. They, they, they would kill each other. They, they nobody could pull them apart. I guarantee. I don't know blaze. But if you're saying she's like Jackie, Jackie is the toughest female bar none I have met ever met in my whole life times 10. Uh, I've seen her whoop guys. I've seen her whoop guys on the street in the bar. Uh, I've seen her whoop boys that got the boys in the dressing room. Uh she hit me. I think it might have been Jonesboro. She nailed me in Jonesboro, Arkansas, when we were working an angle. And uh, I backhanded her 
I mean, it's a shoot. I mean, I backhanded that little girl. She staggered back about three foot and lit back into me again. And Pritchard and Tom was saying, Eric, don't hurt her. Don't hurt her. And I'm saying, get this bitch off of me. Get her off of me. She's killing me. But she is the toughest female that uh, I, I have ever, ever known. Now, Jackie, that was a good plug for you. So uh, come and see me. <laughs> Yeah, there's no doubt she was tough. And you don't remember Blaze. You had a confrontation with her. She's up yeah. on the screen now. Yeah, I, re I remember. She I just didn't well. I never seen her work, you know. I haven't oh, seen her I work. See. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. oh no, she's she's jacked. <laughs> That's what I say. If she's anything like Jackie, that you could empty both dressing rooms and the guys could never pull them apart. Oh, for sure. And <laughs> There's a few fans on here that want to know were the groupies better in Memphis or Texas? Texas, 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 man. Bar none. All right. That was, now, that was pretty good. <laughs> Texas, buddy. Texas. What'd they expect me to say? <laughs> You're I wouldn't know. I'm, 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 just, I'm just going by what all the other guys told me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I do. I did see some of your matches, particularly a couple uh, with Austin, and uh, you were quite the pretty boy in the eighties. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I've, I've changed a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, you can tell I have a, a bad habit, but it's my only bad habit now, and uh, I've got a dip in my mouth. Uh, more time of the day than I don't have a dip in. And, it, you know, it's my only bad habit and I'm not quitting. And my heart doctor don't even uh, ask me about it anymore because I told him, you know, real simple, doc. If I quit chewing right now, what's it get me? Six more months in a nursing home on the end? He said, oh, my God, nobody's ever told me like that. And I said, well, I'm serious. And I just soon not have that six more months in a nursing home. I'm going to chew mine if I couldn't be happy. Someone was actually asking earlier what brand you like. <clears throat> Wolf, fine cut natural. So anybody wants to get me a Christmas present, they come in 10 row towers, <laughs> 10, 10 cans to a box. Well, and yeah, they could actually give it to you because I understand you're going to be meeting fans at this event too, along with Mick Foley and Kevin yeah. Sullivan and all these guys uh, at the meeting. Yes, we're going to. We're going to have the meet and greet and uh, uh, there's certain ticket p ticket holders that uh, are going to get a picture with Mark Lawrence and me in the ring. And that's another big thing. See, it just keeps growing and growing. Mark Lawrence is coming back, people. Mark Lawrence will be there Saturday night doing the commentary uh, for our streaming and uh, upcoming TV shows. And uh I saw Mark a couple of years ago at a convention in Charlotte and uh, we reminisced and uh, I'm looking so forward to working with Mark again. And uh, my gosh, uh, Cactus, Mark, Kevin, it, it's oh, the list. is it, it, I'm telling you, this card is stacked bigger than any card that's been in the Dallas area in the last up 10 years. You can't miss this one. And we need you. Eric Embry always knew I needed you. And I always told you I needed you. And from the bottom of the heart, I knew I needed you. And I appreciated you. And I need you Saturday night. I need every one of you Saturday night. Let's <clears throat> make this kickoff of world class bigger than the world. Let's, let's just set the world on fire. Because we are not, and I'm going to say this on record. We are not going to be just another uh, independent wrestling promotion. We are going to be the next big thing, period. I said it. Well, it's going to be – you guys have a, a lot uh, coming up because this is the kickoff, as you said, this Saturday, December 11th at Southern Junction, which is my favorite <laughs> venue in Texas for wrestling because – the crowd's always crazy there, and and it's a great atmosphere. But you're going to be back in Southern Junction every month for yeah. quite a while to come. And also, the night after, you're going to be in Fort Worth. 
Yes, yes. So, <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to pull up the uh, the names there. Uh, R Richland Hills. So in, in January the 22nd, we're back in Irving. And then the, the following night, the 23rd, we're in uh, Richland Hills. So world class is coming back, Charlie Haas. It's coming back, and there ain't a damn thing you're going to be able to do to stop it. And, yeah, that's a lot come into the same market every month so they're going to need you and Kevin with, with those two great wrestling minds uh, to come up with the best matches to get the fans in the building and, and this kickoff show is very important so I'm looking forward uh, to being there and witnessing it yes yes it, the, the kickoff is very important uh, very very important but you know the, the secret of booking is uh uh, you let the talent, uh, you kind of let the matches uh, work their own, uh, work into their own. Uh, how do you explain? You, 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 I thrive on two people being pissed off at each other because in my mind, oh, it's going to be a hell of a match because he's mad at him. Let's put these two together. And I do that a lot. And uh, you, you see some really uh, wild action uh, because this one don't want this one out doing him and he's not going to let this one do that. And well, I'm not going to let you do this and I'm going to do this and uh, turns into a, a heck of a match most times. Definitely. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing the stuff that you guys put together and, and everything <laughs> else. A lot of fans have been asking on here if you could share some Percy Pringle stories. Of course, oh. for fans that don't know, that's Paul Bear. <laughs> Yeah, Percy was such a such a friend, and you you can count your friends in life on one hand. People, some people say, and Percy was definitely one of those. Uh, Percy, uh, Percy, Percy babysitted Eric Embry. <laughs> Percy kept me out of trouble, kept me from doing stupid things most of the time. Other times he just do them with me, <laughs> but, uh, and you know, people that uh, don't know, uh, Percy was actually a real mortician has a mortician license in Alabama and so forth. And, uh, uh, Percy was the, uh, Jack of all trades in the world-class organization. Uh, Percy, uh, oversaw the writing of the program, uh, oversaw the novelty department that sold the pictures and the t-shirts and all that stuff. Uh, uh, Percy instigated uh, that write-in campaign to bring Eric Embry back. And uh, those uh, mail bags of uh, letters people sent in was a shoot, a hundred percent shoot. We didn't gimmick none of them. We didn't have fake ones stuff to take out on TV there were bags. The post office was screaming at us because there was that big mail bags and uh, from all, all across the world, the TV played everywhere. And uh, Percy did that campaign and uh, uh, anything that any of the guys needed or the office needed, you, you could count on Percy. Uh, Percy could pull it off for you. <laughs> super, super, super guy. Uh, I mean, I still miss Percy. I can't hear you. Nope, I still can't hear you. I can't hear you. What about now? Now I got okay, you. Okay. Um, there's another fan on here that had a question. Uh, did you ever have a good booking partner before someone that you would like consider your best booking partner? Uh, Gary Hart. Uh, uh, I booked with Gary uh, some. Uh, and, you know, uh, the guy that uh, taught me so, so much about this business uh, as a booker, as a wrestler, uh, uh, on how to draw money, uh, how to, how to sell tickets and, uh, so much about so many things of the business. Uh, and this might surprise some of you, 
but was Luke Williams, uh, the sheep herder, bushwhacker. That guy is, is uh, he has forgot more about this business than most of the guys in the business today know. Uh, Luke, Luke was tremendous. Luke is another one of those uh, count on one hand friends. And uh, hopefully uh, he'll be making uh, an appearance in world class, uh, coming in for a meet and greet, maybe a match. I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, that that's uh, one of the names that's out there. Uh, Al Perez. Uh, Al's interested in uh, coming back and uh, making some dates with world class. Uh, you know, he was the world class world heavyweight champion with Gary Hart there for a stretch. And uh, Al and I have uh, stayed in touch over the years. And, you know, the list, uh, the list is endless, basically. Uh, it's, it's all about this kickoff show on Saturday. You know, we've got to fill this building up. I need you. I need you. I need you. And Texas, you never, ever have let me down, ever. So I know you're not going to let me down. I'm going to see you there Saturday. And they are serving alcohol, so you can come there and drink. Well, no don't fear in the matches because uh, Irving, Texas, within the past year, there has been two fan interferences really? uh, in matches. So uh, you never wow. know what could happen. Yeah, no. You know, it, on a serious note, uh, no, nobody wins in a situation like that. Uh, it, it doesn't accomplish anything. Uh, you know, I, I, I love for the people to uh, express their emotions and let them out and holler and scream and cuss and holler and throw or whatever. But uh, where, where the, the guys draw the line is uh, when, when, when you make contact. And uh, a, lo a lot of these guys can uh, really fool you. Uh, you know, if you make contact, uh, I can almost guarantee you, uh, you're going to wish you didn't make contact. But, you know, that, that's all, uh, that, that, that's stuff that you just, no, nobody wins. Nobody wins. And, uh, it's just unnecessary. Let's just all have a good time and uh, enjoy the matches and uh, uh, holler for the guy you like and boo the crap out of the one you don't like. There's a fan on here that comments uh, he thought SWE was done. Now they're now there's their wrestlers are entering world class. What's going I, on? I, I understand, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Haas is calling it his SWE, Charlie's SWE, Charlie's SWE. So, uh, and uh, with with what he did, and, and I just Jerry does not want it uh, want me to go into detail, and I understand completely why. But uh, I, I'm telling you, uh, uh, it really might be a Medusa moment. Uh, Saturday night, uh, it, it all might come to an end. Uh, Bostic pulls it off and, uh, that belt goes to the trash can and, uh, uh it just, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't have got along these lines because we don't need it. But if Charlie wants to play the games, you know, Charlie, you would have been better off to uh, beat up Jerry Bostic's kid compared to what you did. Now that that's saying something, ain't it? You know, you, you have really bit it off, and I guarantee you, somebody's gonna shove it down your throat, pal. Sounds uh, pretty serious. Now I I'm up here in freezing cold Canada, as I mentioned earlier. A lot of fans might not know you were actually in Stampede Wrestling. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Uh, could you share any mm -hmm. memories of that? Yeah, yep. I lived with uh, I, uh, Wayne Hart. He refereed, you know, Stu's boy, and uh, I, I stayed with Wayne and uh, uh, his, in his apartment. And uh, there was a McDonald's about uh, oh 50 yards from the apartment building. And uh, one morning, I walked to McDonald's for breakfast and come back to the apartment, and my cheeks were froze, froze. I mean, hard. And uh, I got on the phone and I called Stu and I said, uh, Stu, it's too damn cold here. I'm on my way to the airport. Goodbye. Have a good day. 
sorry, but I can't take it. It was like 32, wherever Fahrenheit and Celsius meet, like 32 below or something. <clears throat> it was somewhere along there that morning, and I got the hell out of Dodge. Oh, my God, that was so cold. <laughs> so I know what you're yeah. saying, buddy. I wish I had that option to just move somewhere warmer, but I, sadly, <laughs> I all of Canada is like that. <laughs> A, ta a taxi cab come and got me and took me to the airport. I got out of there. <laughs> so but that, that, never was a, you. that was a wild tear. Oh, yeah, Stu would have killed me. Stu said, eh, eh, you're abandoning ship, huh? I said, yes, sir. I can't take it. I'm out of here. But that was a wild territory back in its day. You know, uh, Brent was probably, uh, oh, I don't know. He was young, 20, 21. Uh, Bruce was working, Smith was working, Keith was working, uh, uh, Wayne was refereeing, and uh, oh my gosh, we would go from Calgary to Regina, which was four or five hundred miles, and the boys would it had old vans or old Cadillacs, and you would meet them on a corner somewhere at a designated time, and they were always late, and you would leave at one o'clock or two o'clock sometimes to go. 400 mile trip so needless to say you know we're flying down the roads 150 damn miles an hour and it boggles my mind why uh van loads or cadillac loads of wrestlers did not get killed in that territory but yeah, that, i mean that was. it was just it was just common i mean that, that was just the thing common thing uh yeah. calgary was on friday nights and uh you would uh get your check on uh, Friday night in Calgary and uh, everybody would be at the bank the next morning to cash their check. And uh, you might have to wait an hour, two hours or whatever in the lobby of the bank. And Stu would come in with a brown paper bag, make a big deposit. Then we could cash our checks. <laughs> but I love Stu. I'm, I'm not saying anything meaning that bad to him in any way. I was stuck in Hawaii one time and uh, Harley race. I'd met Harley in uh, uh, Chicago airport and uh, we were talking and he said, kid, don't go to Hawaii. Don't go to Hawaii. That's when Peter had it. And uh, a little Kentucky boy, I'm going to Hawaii. Well, I wish I never had. And uh, it, it was uh, really bad running two nights a week. Uh, the beach was beautiful, but you had to eat some way. And uh, I called Stu from Hawaii, and Stu sent me a ticket to get me out of there. And uh, I told him I had a buddy there with me, Duke Myers. And he said, uh, well, uh, I guess you want me to send him a ticket too. I said, oh, that would be nice. And uh, so he sent us both tickets. I went back to Calgary. Duke come to Calgary. And Duke Myers ended up staying there for years and years working for Stu. Yeah, he was very successful in that company. Yes, he was. Uh, and that's how he got there his first time. Oh, Eric got him rescued out of Hawaii. <laughs> There's a lot of people on here asking about sunshine. Any chance of sunshine coming back to world class? <laughs> no, I hadn't thought about that, but I will certainly uh, check into that. I was with uh, Jimmy Garvin at a convention here, uh, I don't know, two or three years ago. And, uh, you know, Jimmy and her, uh, yeah, that what an idea. And, and, you know, people out there that's listening, send those ideas in. Send them to me. Uh, you know, Eric Embry at worldclassprowrestling.com. Uh, tell me who you want to see. Because, you know, my, my job's a whole lot easier if you tell me who you want to buy a ticket to see. <laughs> Heck yeah. How did you like working with Jerry Jarrett? I love Jerry. You know, Jerry, Jerry is a hard nosed businessman that uh, come up through the, uh, the ranks of uh, his, his mother worked for Nick Goulas who owned the Tennessee territory and who has a horrible reputation, but uh, Jerry come up uh, uh, from really nothing. Uh, didn't have much. And uh, the man's a multimillionaire. And uh, to me, one of the smartest minds the professional wrestling business has ever seen. Uh, uh, 
sometimes, you know, some of the boys are not happy with him sometime, but you know, it, it goes back to life. Everybody ain't going to like you all the time, no matter who you are. And, uh, very, very successful businessman, not just in the wrestling business. After uh, the wrestling business, uh, uh, he opened a very successful uh, construction business, uh, building apartment buildings and homes and hotels and uh, a whole slew of things. So, uh, and I talked to Jerry, uh, oh, I don't know, four or five months ago, then maybe two or three months ago. And, uh, uh, he, he showed an interest uh, in coming back into uh, world class. and uh, But then it just, uh, it never really materialized. Uh, but that interest was there and uh, we enjoyed reminiscing and talking about the old sportatorium days. Did you, did you ever have to deal with any backstage fights when you were bookers? What was your philosophy if they happened? <laughs> Bill Watts, you always hear, would just say, let them get it out of their system. Would you try and stop something like that, or would you let them fight it yeah. out? Well, the, the thing there is to stop the bullshit uh, as it starts or before it starts. Uh, because, you know, and, and I understand Watts' philosophy, and uh, I don't disagree with it. Let them get it out of their system. Because tomorrow night, they're going to be all huggy and... Uh, uh, hunky dory and best buddies. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is not a, a kid's game. This is a rough ass sport and tempers flyer. And, uh, uh, you know, hell there's, uh, e everything happens. Uh, uh, you know, you get your nose busted or knocked around the side of your face or your eye popped out to here. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of stiff stuff that uh, could have been an accident. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. And, uh, uh, but I always just tried to, uh, hey guys, come here. Uh, let, let's cut the shit. Uh, are you all going there, figure it out, and then uh, come back and let me know it's over. That, that, was, my, that was my philosophy. Because, uh, you know, it, it's one big family and uh, we're all family. And uh, everybody knows uh, some of the best damn fights you see is between two sisters or two brothers. But if somebody else uh, goes to mess with them, they're both on top of them. Yeah, that's that's very true. Now, you you helped break Austin in and you worked with him a lot in his younger days. Is there anything from knowing him in those days that would surprise fans to hear about him? <laughs> Uh, not that I want to tell. <laughs> Steve is uh, one of the people I've stayed in contact with. Uh, we don't call each other every two or three months or anything like that. But I did talk to him, uh, oh, I don't know, a month or so ago. And uh, the, uh, I, I, the, the part I played with Steve is uh, Chris had him in his school, who I, you know, I helped Chris get his school going with Jerry. And uh, all that. Chris Adams and I were buddies. I mean, you know, we, we got along great. Uh, uh, Chris and Jeannie, his wife then, uh, were at, I met them in Mexico. And we were the only Americans there. So we hung out with each other for a few months. And uh, uh, Chris had him in a school. And uh, Austin, you know, was paying to go to that school every week. And uh, I needed talent. And uh, I told Chris, uh, yeah. You know, Austin, that you told me to go look at the other, you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, he's still in your school? He's, yeah. I said, when's, when's he getting out? And uh, he said, well, you know, uh, down the road, down the road. I said, no. I said, I want to start using him. He said, no, 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 no. He's paying me. And I said, I understand that. But either you graduate him or get him out of your school to where I can use him or I'm going to approach him. <clears throat> and uh, that that's how he... Uh, uh, got going because uh, I could tell I had no idea Steve was going to be anything close to what he become because <clears throat> he did all that on his own. My God, God bless him. But I could tell Steve had the it factor that everybody uh, talks about that nobody knows how to explain what the it 
the it factor is. And uh, I could tell that Steve was going to go places. And uh, he worked his ass off, paid his dues, and uh, boy, did he go places. <laughs> yeah, I I'm so happy for him. Uh, I wished it was me instead of him, but other than that, I'm happy for him. <laughs> How was he in the ring? Uh, was he stiff? Was he easy to yeah. work with? I've heard he doesn't like chops that much, right? Yeah, he's like me. I hate chops. That That is my least favorite thing in the professional wrestling business are chops because, damn, they hurt. There ain't no way for them not to hurt. <clears throat> and if you were working with me back in the day and you were a chopper, I would tell you, don't chop me. Oh, brother, let me do Let me chop one time. You chop me, I'm going to hit you right in the mouth. And when you chop me, I bust you right in the nose. And you didn't chop me no more. And uh, But Steve was very snug. He believed in uh, convincing you what he was doing was real because it was real. And God bless him for that and all the old timers that worked that way. Yeah, I mean, it was a rough business back in the day. Yeah. <clears throat> Last question I'll ask you before we wrap this up. Do you have any party stories about Chris Adams? Because he seems like just an insane <laughs> Chris, you know, Chris, I love Chris and I loved his wife, both of them, Jeannie, Tony, and uh, uh, Chris was uh, very, very business, uh, a hell of a worker. Oh my God. He could work with a broomstick and uh, make the broomstick look good. Uh, he was a partying son of a gun. But, you know, I could snatch Chris off and say, hey, come here. You're going too far. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <clears throat> and when Chris got the alcohol in him, God bless him, but he was Jekyll and Hyde. And I'm not telling you anything I haven't told Chris right to his face. And uh, the, the, the alcohol was his worst demon. Not everything else. Alcohol was his worst demon. <laughs> I see a lot of uh, wrestlers have those issues, but uh, it definitely took him early, yeah. earlier than he would have passed otherwise. So yes. the yes. whole reason we had you on tonight, of course, is because this Saturday night, very only a couple days away, world-class pro wrestling returns to Irving, Texas. And here it is, kids free with the purchase of an average <laughs> Mick Foley is going to be there. Kevin Sullivan, Charlie Oss, Fuego Del Sol, Eric <clears throat> Embry, The Blood Hunter, Blaze, Carlito, Jacob Fatu, Moonshine Mantel, Andrew Anderson, lots <clears throat> of female wrestlers, Jenny Santana. It's going to be great. WorldClassProWrestling.com has all the ticket information. But I'll let you wrap this up, Eric. It's always an honor and pleasure talking to you. But I'll let uh, you're you my, close this you, off. You uh, are my you are my favorite podcast ever, even before I met you. I watched you for the last few years thinking, my God, this kid is so good at what he does. But Saturday night, oh my gosh, uh the, the card is, is so stacked. And uh that Texas legend uh Axon Jackson is gonna be there. That's another one that we uh didn't throw out there. Action's going to be there. He's an old buddy I haven't seen in many, many years. I'm looking forward to hooking up with. And uh, But now I'm going to go back uh, just for a second on this Charlie Haas, Jerry Bosnick. If you people think you're going to see a wrestling match there, uh, you're going to be disappointed because uh, I, I think that's going to turn into just a Pier 6 brawl, probably right from the damn start. Because uh, I haven't seen Jerry uh, as mad as I've seen him today uh, uh, in the whole time I've known him. Uh, Charlie, you know what you did was wrong. You know you stirred it up. You know you went past personal. And uh, uh, Jerry, uh, all, all the mar for all the marbles, right off the bat, right off the bat, everything is on the line right <laughs> off the bat. So, Charlie Haas, I hear you're a hell of a wrestler, but I don't think you're going to get to wrestle in this match. I think you're going to have to fight, and uh, I think you better lace your boots up tighter than you've ever laced them up before. 
Cactus Jack, can't wait to see you, brother. Mark, can't wait to see you. And I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm so excited. Heck, I won't, probably won't even be able to sleep tonight. I'm flying into Dallas tomorrow. I'm going to be there a day early and uh, go reminiscing, uh, maybe go to the grassy lot where the sportatorium used to be and uh, uh, feel those uh, vibes, those uh, spirits. And uh, Dallas, all seriousness, I need you. I need you Saturday. I will see you at the Southern Junction. Ah.